Oh, yay, he's doing a whole video about a build plate. Well, yeah, aren't you curious? I was. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. A few weeks ago, Bamboo Lab reached out to me and asked if I was interested in trying out a new build plate. My initial response was no, I have all the build plates I need, thanks. But the more they talked about it and the more they explained what it was, the more curious I got. Now, if you've been around the channel for very long, you know curiosity gets me in all kinds of trouble, so here we are. You also know that I try to be as transparent as I possibly can. In this case, they did send me the build plate for free and there is an affiliate link down in the video description, but they're not paying me anything else for making this video. Now, they're calling this the Bamboo Cool Plate Super Tack. That's an unusual mouthful of words, which is fitting because it's kind of an unusual printing surface. To the touch, it feels soft and grippy, almost rubberized. The claim is that you can print PLA and PETG on it at lower temperatures without sacrificing bed adhesion. In fact, the adhesion on this thing is absolutely unreal. It doesn't need any glue stick or liquid glue or any special cleaning. You just put it in and go. They claim that printing at lower temperatures saves energy, which is neat, I guess, but I'm much more interested in some of the other side effects. Lower bed temps means less heat in an enclosed printer, making it easier to print PLA without having to open the door. It makes the prints much less likely to peel up at the cooler edges of the plate on open printers, and it continues to stick even when the plate cools, so you might actually get away with a power fail restart. Maybe. There are a lot of variables with that one. If you look at the Bamboo Lab store, they've had a shakeup in their build plate lineup. The engineering plate is gone, which is fine with me. I could never get anything to stick to it anyway. They now have a textured PEI plate, a smooth PEI plate, this new cool plate, and some specialty plates that emboss patterns on the bottom surface of the print. Personally, I've been printing almost everything on the textured PEI plate. PLA, ABS, and PETG get a coating of liquid glue. Nylon and polycarbonate get glue stick. That works for the most part. The adhesion with PETG isn't as great as I'd like, but it works pretty well most of the time. For the few situations where the textured surface isn't appropriate for the finished part, I've been running liquid glue on the engineering or the high temp plates, but I've never really been happy with that solution. It basically works, but the glue leaves residue on the print that needs to be cleaned off, and it eventually builds up on the bed and starts leaving blemishes on the bottom surface of the print if you don't clean it regularly. When I got the new SuperTac plate, excuse me, the Bamboo Cool Plate SuperTac, the first part I wanted to test was this mounting clip I designed for my LED shop lights. This looks like a simple part, but it's actually pretty difficult to print, especially if you fill the build plate and the ends of the clips end up near the cooler edges of the plate. I printed 30 or 40 of these, and I lost more than a few of them when the ends of the legs peeled off the plate and curled during the print. Now, my first couple of attempts on the new plate didn't go well either because I didn't have the bed temperature high enough. PETG really wants to print at about 70 degrees, and I was trying to print quite a bit cooler than that. But about halfway through my testing, they released the new version of the slicer that has working profiles, so now it just defaults to 70 degrees, and it works fine. I tried these in PETG on both the X1 Carbon and on the A1 Mini, and the parts came out great on both. The bed adhesion was excellent. Now, I have my A1 Mini sitting in my office where it's exposed to drafts, and I was impressed with how well the parts stuck. The cool air didn't seem to affect them at all. Peeling the parts off the bed does feel a little weird. I'm used to hearing a crack and having the parts pop free, but on this plate, you have to actually peel the plate off the parts. On the website, they claim that the bed has a natural texture that hides the bottom surface of the print. I rarely worry that much about aesthetics, but I did design some Clow42 badges for my toolboxes a while back, where the bottom surface of the print is visible and it really does need to be perfect. I printed this in three different colors of PLA, silver and red for the text, and black for the body of the badge. 
I screwed up on the first print and I used the strength profile, which has six walls. So the fill on the bottom surface ended up looking basically concentric. The extrusions are definitely visible and they look nice and clean, but I went ahead and printed a second one with two walls and rectilinear fill, which is what I had meant to use the first time. And while the extrusions are definitely still visible, they're flat and they're clean. The claim is that the bottom surface should look like the top surface, and it honestly isn't bad. It's pretty close. The clock spring torture toaster is one of my standard printer testing models, but what a lot of people don't realize is that it's also a really challenging bed adhesion test. The lever that pops the toast is built up inside the model in free space, not touching anything else off of a very small contact patch on the bed. I have never actually gotten it to print perfectly without at least a little support material under the arm. At least, I haven't succeeded until now. The bed adhesion on this plate is unreal, like I said earlier, and the parts came out perfectly in both PLA and PETG on the first try with zero issues. They were maybe even stuck to the plate a little bit too well. You can always reduce the adhesion by lowering the bed temperature a little, and you might need to do that if your parts are delicate. Just to see it, I also tried isolating the lever from the toaster and printing it in PLA all by itself, and it's a thing to behold. I'm not easily impressed, but this print made me stop and just appreciate how far 3D printing has come. If you follow Gabe over at Slant 3D, he's always showing large parts built at an angle off of a tiny contact patch. And if you want to do that, this is your build plate. The last thing I wanted to test before passing judgment on this plate is a large part that fills the bed all the way to the edges. If you printed bed filling parts before, you know that this is the worst case scenario for curling and warping both because the large part builds up higher forces due to uneven cooling, but also because you're venturing out to the edges of the plate where the temperatures are usually a little cooler and there's more exposure to unheated air. This is especially true on a bed slinger where cool air is literally being pumped across the part as it moves. This is a base plate and bracket to hold servo motors on my desk for software development, and it just barely fits on the bed. I actually ran out of filament during the print and had to change the spool, but despite the extra time it spent sitting exposed to the cool air, it never let go. The bottom surface looks pretty good and I don't see any curling at all. Does it look exactly like the top surface? Eh, it's close. It's not textured and it's not glossy, so if you want the bottom surface to blend, this is not bad. So, should you rush out right now and buy one of these plates with my affiliate link? Probably. The only real complaint I have about it is that it is a little bit difficult to position on the magnetic bed inside the X1 and the other enclosed bamboo printers. Since the surface is kind of tacky, once the back edge sticks to the magnets, it's actually kind of hard to slide it around to position it properly in the guides. It definitely takes some practice. Now for me, I think this is gonna be my new go-to plate for PLA and PETG when I don't specifically want a textured surface. The bed adhesion is fantastic, and that should make things a lot easier because I design a lot of parts with irregular shapes and acute outside angles on the first layer. I know I really shouldn't, but I do it all the time. I'm still gonna use the textured PEI plate for ABS and nylon, of course, and I actually prefer the textured surface with carbon and glass fiber filaments because it blends well with the rough sidewalls that those filaments produce. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried the new SuperTac, excuse me, Bamboo Cool Plate SuperTac. I'm curious if it's working as well for you as it is for me or if you have a different favorite plate. Be sure to mention what you're printing because what works best is going to vary with the application. Thank you for watching.